Hey everyone, welcome back to our Red Letter Challenge. We are on day seven. Yes, that's right. We, we are inching our way closer and closer to be able to walk towards that 40 days of a challenge, but we take it a day at a time. We are diving deep into the great target of our relationship with God, of being able to be in a relationship, our being in our relationship with God. And in that target, we're going to unpack this day after day. Uh, yesterday, what a great uh, understanding and depth that we can, where we should start opening up our Bibles. <clears throat> we're going to do that every single day from here on out because that's just a great discipline. Uh, but more important than just a discipline, something that you can feel good about, that is actually uh, raising and uh, having your relationship with God, uh, something that, that you listen to him, that you hear from him. And that does, he says, I promise to be in my revealed word. And so we're going to be opening that up. So make sure that you have your Bibles uh, present and close uh, so that we can open up uh, just at the end of this video each and every day, uh, being able to take those next steps. And so that was the challenge yesterday, to open up your Bible every day so that you can hear from God, that you can listen to him, so that you can just uh, unravel and, and get revealed again the great uh, plan of salvation that Jesus has uh, for you and for me, but also the great faith strengthening he has as we open up our Bibles. So we're on to this next challenge. It comes into this next being part. Uh, being in a relationship with God opens up his word, but then as you open up his word, you talk to him. You don't just listen for, uh, from him. That's a beautiful thing. He wants to give you direction. He wants to give you a light. He wants to put that lamp to your feet to be able to give you uh, a direction in life. But you also talk to him. He does. He's not a God that just is in control. Uh, is just in control of everything of your thoughts, everything of your life. He is a God that's in control. Uh, but he also wants you. He is a God that wants your conversation. He wants you to talk to him, and that is that next discipline that next devotion of our walk of faith and that is to pray day seven the challenge is to pray to god what is your prayer life like right now maybe non-existent and uh while i say that's okay it's not okay you need to talk to god and it's not this kind of prescribed kind of way of talking to god that you have to open up a certain prayer and read a certain prayer it's just a conversation between you and God, you haven't a, you haven't already a tough uh, Monday morning. <laughs> I'll then talk to God, tell Him about what you're feeling, tell Him about your angst, tell Him about your fears, tell Him about th ask, uh, thank Him for another new morning, uh, being able to another new day to be able to just bask in His mercy and grace. But also, what would you have me do, Lord? Open my eyes to what you're doing in front of me. That's one of my prayers every single morning um, and throughout the day. Um, I love being able to start my day off of being able to be in prayer. Um, it is opening my opening the scriptures um, and being able to actually pray those scriptures. Um, I love being able to actually open up the psalm. That's where it kind of starts for me because it, those are cries, those are petitions, those are uh, songs being able to be brought towards God. So I love being able to actually speak those out loud and, and pray those before God and being able to see how that uncovers uh, in my day. But I always ask the Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes what you're doing in the world around me. Open my eyes to what you're doing in and through me. And use me as your servant as best I can uh, to be able to honor you and to also build your kingdom. And he always places things in front of me. He always opens those eyes, not in a marvelous, miraculous way. Uh, but he does open my eyes to be able to say, oh, yeah, he, he places. At the end of the day, when I put my head down uh, in, into bed and being able to think about the day, being able to think of what tomorrow could bring. Um, it does capture, again, that answered prayer. Um, and it's not this lavish prayer. It's not this uh, big words prayer as, as Zach is walking with you uh, in day seven of your challenge in the Red Letter book. Um, it doesn't have to be this lavish. It means that you just talk with God, but that you do it in an earnest way, that you do it in a continuous way. He gave the example of Luke chapter 18. Uh, you can read about that on page 50 of uh, that widow coming to the judge over and over again, being persistent and wearing that judge down to be able to just receive what she is praying for, receive what she is going for. And he says, I just, I just want to give to her what she's asking so that she doesn't come and wear me out more or attack me, as it says there. And the reality to that, that was Jesus speaking to his disciples um, of how to pray. 
coming to God continuously, persistently. And if it is of his will, he'll connect that and be able to grant that. If it is not of his will, you're going to continue to come to God and he's going to continue to show you that it's not of his will. And so the answer is no. You have to kind of recheck what you want, and what you need. <clears throat> because I love where it says this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? No, he's a God that provides. But he's a God of conversation. He's a God that just isn't a puppet master, as I was talking before, of just controlling everything that goes on and, and being able to not have an input. No, he's not the puppet master. He's actually a loving God that still goes according to his will, still goes according to his justice, but brings us as a part of that. He wants us to have a conversation like a child to his father, coming to him, asking him, pleading with him, talking with him. Hey, how was your day? Speak to him. You have a struggle? You have an idol? You have something going on within your life? Talk to God. He's the one that's going to be able to hear you and transform you. Because, as is stated uh, very apparently on page 49 here, it's a great push for us to remind us, prayer is the most powerful tool we have on this earth. Prayer is the most powerful tool we have on this earth. So pray each day. Pray earnestly. Bring before the Lord big things, small things. He'll listen. He loves you. He loves the conversation that he can have with you. Maybe not an audible conversation, but really you read his word as we're talking about opening that up every day. You bring that, you bring your request to God. All of a sudden you're listening to God through his word and you're conversing with him in prayer. What a relationship that looks like into being with God in that relationship. I said I'd open up the Bibles with you, and I know Luke chapter 18 is on that page 50, but I want to open up uh, to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 is in and amongst uh, the the Sermon on the Mount, so if you'd open up your Bibles, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. I just want to read this with you, and and that can send this off into our day, and we're going to do some prayer time as well, because a challenge to pray and you don't pray, that would be a misfit. So um, anyways, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, let's read together. It says, And when you pray, not if you pray, but when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love praying standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. Don't boast about your prayer. Don't use it as a, a way to be seen in your faithfulness. No, use it as a conversation with you and God. So it says this, to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room. Close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for their father knows what you need before you ask him. I just love that verse. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. But that doesn't give you an excuse. Oh, he knows what I need, so I don't even need to to talk about it. No. All of a sudden, when you talk to him, you're going to understand him better. What is his will? What are his ways? He knows what you need, and he will provide that. But he wants you to be along in that conversation. So be able to bring your needs to God. Be able to bring your wants to God and see how he continues to shape you as you open up his word, and as you talk with him, and what he will do that. But here's the prayer. I think we pray this together this day because it is that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. But it also is something that's brought here in verse 6 of being able to be able to title God who he is. He's our father in heaven. We come to him as his children. But he is so holy, and we are not so ask him to be holy. And within that, we get to forgive others as we've been forgiven. And as we get to continue to ask God, we do that as we pray the Lord's Prayer together. It's actually in verse 9. I'm just going to read it, but you can close your eyes and just hear us praying together. Let's do this. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen is 
truly, truly, this would be so. This is certainly true. That's what Amen says. So your prayers, your needs, your wants, your talking to God, you can end it off with being able to say, Amen, this is certainly true in my life right now, and I'm conversing to you, God, so that we can just build our relationship with one another. Prayer isn't a discipline that says, I should do it in the morning, I should do it at noontime, I should do it in the evening. If that helps you to be able to have that structure, great. But it it should be throughout the day. It should be, thank you, Lord, for this day. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are your faithful people. Help us to be faithful. When you see something on the road, when you see something in your classroom, when you see something at your workplace, when you see something in your family, pray over it. It doesn't mean that you have to get down on your knees, close your eyes, hold your hand, but you can look on that and say, Lord, help that child. Lord, help my friend. Lord, show your presence at this time right now. And you can just do those quick prayers. But if you want to get into a more deliberate prayer, then you can turn to page 51 to help you in your prayer. To be able to say, maybe this is the first time you're praying. Maybe uh, it's still awkward to kind of think about talking to something that you're not really listening to or not really hearing. Um, and so spend some time in prayer today. That's the challenge. If you need help, page 51 talks about the the Acts prayer, and it breaks it down for you to be able to have a nice, easy, simple kind of structure to your prayer. But prayer is talking to God. Prayer is the most powerful tool that we have on this earth. So use it. Open up your Bibles. I pray that you did that with me already. That's great, but you can do it on your own a little bit farther. Challenge is to open up your Bibles, and then the challenge today is pray to God. He wants to hear from you. He wants to hear all about you. I know he already knows your need, but he wants to have the conversation with you to be able to hear you, to be able to provide for you, and for you to be able to build that relationship with him. He loves you. He wants to talk with you. And what a blessed day it is to talk to our creator, our God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to be able to be blessed in that way into this day. So today, pray earnestly. Pray continually. And just remember, he wants to have that conversation with you because Jesus loves you.